here, we're going to talk about Mott. And um, yeah, that sounds like such a foreign thing to many of us, uh, the way that we grew up, uh, you know, mostly on a Christian basis, various kinds. And um, so Mott has to do with truth, justice, and righteousness. It's that's the short answer. Somebody were to ask you, what is, what is Mott? Just the short answer is truth, justice, and righteousness. Now, let's see here. Let me move this over. So, so I will say started out as a Black n- n- Christian nationalist church. And uh, one of the first verses that we were taught was this one here, Acts 7.22. And we use the uh, New International Version. It doesn't seem so radical now, but in the 80s, you know, 1980, 81, 82, uh, this was kind of a, a radical departure because most people don't feel like they're really in the spiritual realm of the Bible unless they use the King James Version. They hear all these, these thou thithers as such. And, uh, but this uh, version, you know, is kind of a, a colloquialism that is used in today's English, is, is kind of today's standard English. And in Acts 7.22, in the New International Version, it says, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deed. So that led us to this phrase here. And this was on the uh, worship folder of Wose in those early days Book of Nahum, Uh, that was a book in the Old Testament I had never heard of. Book of Nahum, chapter 3, 8 and 9. Are you better than Thebes, situated on the Nile, with water around her? The river was her defense, the waters her wall. Cush and Egypt were her boundless strength. Punt and Libya were among her allies. So that, we we would see that every day or every Sunday, on the worship folder. And here is the worship folder, the Wose community, the original one. And, and before we had the onk, we had the cross, and here's the, here's the phrase that I just read, and it said, welcome to the Christian community of Wose. And this was our address, 3209 Galindo Street, uh, off of Fruitvale in uh, East Oakland. And here is the co-founder of Wose. Uh, We don't see a lot of pictures of Minister Calhoun, but this is, um, well, his his full name is William E. Calhoun. And, um, you know, we just called him Bill and or Bill Calhoun. And uh, this is me. Um, this was my first sermon, and, and, you know, there I am getting nervous there with Minister Calhoun. And then uh, after uh, my message, uh, these three people came forward. Uh, this is um, a young brother Muhammad, Mama Nguina's son, and this is uh, Ranir, Mama Jasiri's oldest son, and this sister is uh, Karen Stroud. There's Minister Makalisi, and this was back in the day. And there's Mother Smith, those of you that uh, right. re- recall her. Um, Minister Motep, do you remember what your first message was about? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? That was my first message, yeah. So that's back in the day. Um, and... But Minister Calhoun and Minister Makalisi, then Tim Soule Jr., were availed to the uh, library of 
Dr. J. Alfred Smith, they were ministers in training at Allen Temple Baptist Church. And he said, hey, you guys, you guys can have at it in my library. And this is the book that they picked up, Destruction of Black Civilization by Dr. Chancellor Williams. And uh, in chapter three of Destruction of Black Civilization, talks about the city of a hundred gates. References have been made to Thebes and it may sit, and it may have seemed to almost be passing references, yet Thebes was the most important single city in the entire history of the Black people. The whole series of lectures could be properly based on Thebes. The history of Black Africa might well begin at Thebes, for this was truly the etern eternal city of the Blacks that presented the most compelling evidence that they were the builders of the earliest civilization in Chem, later called Egypt, as well as the great civilization in the South. The foundations of Thebes, like the black state of which it was centered, goes far back in prehistory and not even a general stone age period can be suggested. So, you know, this is how we're, I'm, I'm building up to something now. We're, we're, this is how our, our name came about. This is how they uh, uh, discovered the name Wose. And then this is also in chapter three of, of Destruction of Black Civilization. And uh, throughout the study of the Black man's history, we find ourselves constantly misled or puzzled if we forget that practically all the names and terms in use are not African names and terms, but Greek, Roman, Arabic, Anglo-Saxon, et cetera. Some of the more recent pre-European and pre-Asian African names, however, have been rediscovered. One of these earlier names for thieves was, was the No or the Naaman of the Bible and ancient Hebrew writers, but the African name was Wose. And like the Greek Thebald referred to all upper Ethiopia or upper Egypt. The blacks also made the distinction between Wose, the Thebald and no way Thebes, the university city. Another point of the highest importance here is that the African name for Thebes was not, not only comes from the South, as Nims points out, but the name itself is the name of the imperial scepter of Ethiopia, a golden staff ribbon with ostrich feathers at the top. Here now is a single name that, if all by itself, gives far reaching insights into the history of the Blacks. And this is why I have urged that high up on the list of research fields yet to be explored, there should be one devoted to the rediscovering African names and their meanings. So this is where that name Wolse comes from. And here it is. Uh, so most people say Waset, but uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams and his uh, research uh, group uh, came with this name, Wose. And here it is again. This is how you would write the area. Here's the Waz staff here and the ostrich feather coming off from it. And this is a T. This loaf here is a T. And this grid-like thing uh, denotes like a city or uh, a, a town. And so this is how you would write Wose or Waset. I'm going to stop here and just, just pause for a minute. Are there any questions uh, that you would, or any comments that you have at this time? I have a question. 
Oh, okay. yes. Yes, Judy. Uh -huh. Okay. One, I just quickly, I don't want to keep, keep the flow going. Um, you said, we'll say, and it was some many people would put, pronounce it was set. Yes. And so where is the origin? How are you? You said, um, I forgot, who was the person? Was it Dr. Dr. Chancellor Williams. Uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams. Okay, I'm familiar with the book. He started pronouncing it. Was there a reason why he, I mean, what was the origin? Or well, uh, see, the, the, the thing is, with the language, Medu Nature, mm -hmm. um, which uh, they call hieroglyphics, uh, there are not, they, they don't usually have like vowels. So, right. so a lot of times when you see a, a word or name, it's just consonants all run together. But the people that were speaking at that time, they knew where the vowels went. So one researcher may see a, a, a name and they put an O, another researcher would put an A or an E. So sometimes even when you see Ra, it's spelled R-A, or sometimes it's spelled R-E. If you look at if you look at Kemet, it's just three consonants, K-M-T. A burnt piece of uh, charcoal, uh, a low, Come here. and an owl. Yes. What 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 John? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Talking to my grandson over there. Oh, okay. I forgot I was on I'll mute. Well, it sounds like he wants to get into the conversation. That's so Judy, did I answer your question? You did. And the only reason I did stop to ask that is because the next the meeting for the women coming up is named. This is the name of the group, correct? What's it? The name of the group is is uh Wow uh Women of Wose. Women of okay. Well, yeah, the name of the group is Wow. Any other comments um, before we? Uh... I had a question. Yes, sir. It's it's a question related more to that I wanted to ask when I saw the picture of you as a young man, and with your name, MIT, Imhotep Akwulan. Mm -hmm. What was your name before that? You know what? I don't like to deal with that. You don't. Okay. I, I, you, you know what? I'll I'll talk to you about it uh, offline. Okay. Okay. I mean. You know, I, I grew up in, in Oakland. There's people that know my name. There's people in my family that, you know, even though I've been in Hotep Al Kabalan since 1980, since 1980. Mm. Uh, uh, the, you know, but the, they'll, I have an uncle that still refuses uh, to, to call me that. Uh, so uh, it, um, you know, I uh, the other thing too about that, John. Just on a personal note, I never liked my name. I never, I never liked my name. I always felt like, you know, you're really gonna have to tell me. <laughs> I never, I never liked my name, and and uh, so my name um, actually has my my name is like three first names, you know. And I and I and toward the end, before I changed my name, I, I always went by my last name. And and a lot of people just thought that um, that that was my um, that was my first name. Mm -hmm. and, and just a side note, Brother John, so many people are like that. Once you change your name, you don't want to go back. You, you just don't want to even refer to that other name. You really don't. Yeah, I, I don't want you, I don't want people to think of me as as that, you know, but you. when I came to Wose, I was in Hotep Al Kabalan, yeah. you know, so, uh, and I and I took that name, uh, you know, I was really into Dr. Ben at the time, um, still am to a certain extent, and all through his Black Man of the Nile and his family, uh, he, he referred to Al Kabalan, and um, he said it was the oldest indigenous word for the continent of Africa. And I said, you, you know, it was, it was the name of his publishing company. So I ended up taking that name, yeah. uh, uh, Imhotep Al Kabalan. Oh, wow. Dandiwe, glad to see you today. All right. So I'm going to go back to, the, to sharing the screen.
unless there's some other uh, uh, questions or comments. Well, I just wanted to say, I'm just curious, but not to be answered during this class, why somebody would want or need to know somebody's name before they changed it. But never mind. <laughs> Well, well, you know, it, it's uh, it, it, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not uh, put put off by it. It's just, you, you know, that's just the way I am, um, and and uh, I, I I appreciate the the comment. And me and John talk offline all the time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to him uh, probably later today or or tomorrow, and and we'll we'll get that out. My my father, oddly enough. You know, it was very difficult in my family to, uh, you know, when you first change your name, and uh, I was I was the only boy. Are you wet? And and uh, all of the, all of those things, and uh, so. But my father now, uh, like my son, he he was uh, was playing soccer a lot, and in college, uh, when they would. Uh, when the announcers would say his name and, uh, and he would say, they would say my, my son's uh, last name wrong. My father was there, you know, uh, you know, uh, outraged that they weren't pronouncing Al Cabalon correctly. So a lot of, a lot of things happen, <laughs> you know, over time. Um, I put the um, uh, WAS staff on the commemorative uh, stole you know, for the 40 year anniversary. And I believe that there's still some available. They might be on the Oakland website or certainly with uh, Mama Darnisha, but I put the, uh, I put the WAS staff uh, on that commemorative thing. Okay, so this is, um, you, you know, when we're talking about uh, Waset or Wose, it's the area is now called Luxor and Karnak, you know, Luxor is, is at one spot uh, on, the, on the east bank of the Nile, uh, Karnak is on the, on the other, and these um, avenue of sphinxes here, they, uh, they are uncovering more and more, and they and they're actually go for like a mile. So that's the latest information that I've, that I've found from, from people that live there and I keep in contact with. So these pictures here are ancient Wose. And this is a sacred lake where people were baptized. This is where initiates were baptized. Leadership of women um, in politics and women really take it to... Excuse me, I'm going to... Uh... Uh, is there someone I need to uh, mute? I'm going to do that. Uh, you know, I just I just didn't want that feedback. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, you, you know what? Let me make uh, Bill. Let me make you a, a co-host. And um, all right. Okay. I always feel like I'm shutting people up. All right. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I am okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is this is a sacred lake where uh, people were baptized. Initiates were baptized in the sacred lake. This is where the, the origin of baptism comes from. All right. So, but our our topic today is about mat. And a lot of times it's uh, displayed, the heart is on one side of the scale and an ostrich feather, single ostrich feather is on the other side of the scale and your heart is supposed to be light as a feather in order to proceed on. So here, um, I saw this today, I thought I'd put it in, the scales of, of balance of ma'at, truth, justice, boundaries for living. Ma'at is at the center for judging, weighing. Um, your, 
spirit, your, your essence, your soul is on one side. It's your core being. It's your desires, your cares, inclinations, actions, deeds. On the other side is morality and truth, not heavy hearted. And um, the so-called Ten Commandments are derived from the declarations of innocence. Uh, Western scholars refer to them as the negative confessions. But remember that first phrase, Acts 7.22, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So as Moses being part of the priestly class, he certainly would have been familiar with the declarations of innocence or the laws of mind, out of which we see the Ten Commandments coming. So there are actually 42 declarations of innocence, and this is how it's written in uh, Medunetur or Suf language. It's 42 declarations of innocence. And what are, what are people saying? They said, I've not committed sin. I've not committed robbery with violence. I've not stolen. I've not slain men and women. I've not stolen food. I've not swindled offerings. I've not stolen from God. I've not told lies. I've not carried away food. I've not cursed. I've not closed my ears to truth. I've not committed adultery. I have not made anyone cry. I have not felt sorrow without reason. I've not assaulted anyone. I'm, I am not deceitful. I have not stolen anyone's land. I've not been an eavesdropper. Uh-oh. Uh, I've not falsely accused anyone. I've not been angry without reason. I've not seduced anyone's wife. I've not polluted myself. I've not terrorized anyone. I have not disobeyed the law. I have not been excessively angry. Again, I have not cursed God. I've not behaved with violence speaking. I have not caused disruption of peace. I have not acted hastily or without thought. I have not overstepped my boundaries of concern. I have not exaggerated my words. I have not worked evil. I have not used evil thoughts or words or deeds. I have not polluted the water. I have not spoken angrily or arrogantly. I have not cursed anyone in thought, word, or deed. I have not placed myself on a pedestal. I have not stolen that which belongs to God. I have not stolen from or disrespected the deceased. I have not taken food from a child. I have not acted with insolence. I have not destroyed property belonging to God. So uh, these are what's known as the declarations of innocence. Uh, people have changed the, 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 the meaning because when we first find out about it, you know, reading Sir Wallace Budge and others uh, like him, they refer to them as the negative confessions because they begin with, I have not, you know, thus and so, but kind of liberating it liberated it, and, and now it's referred to as the Declarations of Innocence. This is how you uh, write uh, Mat in Medunetra or Suf language. I'm going to pause here uh, just to see uh, where we are, take a pulse. So um, any questions on, on what we've just presented or comments or? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So I've always, uh, the thing that always crossed my mind about those 42 uh, laws <laughs> is that when you, if you make that confession, well, I'm thinking of myself. 
I've done ninety percent of those things that it says I have not done. So what? What kind? Of, what would that serve as? I'm not understanding why that would. I mean, you'd be lying. I, I'm thinking of myself now, right? So most of those things I've done. So how could I go before the judgment seat and say I have not when I have? So that's is that making sense? Well, you know what, John? That's a that's a very um, that's a very good question. And uh, I'm sorry, but looks like you're going to help. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help myself. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, I get it. <laughs> but, okay, those laws were for society. By by keeping those laws, you produce a just society. And there are 42. Uh, now, uh, originally, people say that they were um, there were 42 provinces, or or otherwise called gnomes. Mm -hmm. But now lately I've come into some information that perhaps there were not just provinces, but there, there were actually 42 different tribes. Mm -hmm. And they would have like a great uh, gathering of people and, uh, you know, it'd be a big parade and, and a person would come in and say, hey, I'm John Jackson from uh, Rancho Cordova and I have not done this. And, and, uh, and the next person would come and say, hi, I'm Tony Scott from Dallas, Texas, and I have not done that. Uh, you know, and and, and it, it was actually by, by doing Mott, it, 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 it keeps a just society, and it's the task and the reward. So, okay, you recognize, okay, I've done some of these things, and uh, they, they weren't... Uh, in accordance with what would be good for society, what would be good for my internal soul, but you know, you're working on yourself. And so at that time, you want to be, you want to balance out. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's not like, I, I guess we shouldn't look at it in terms of the Western sense, because actually the Western sense comes out of this, but this, these uh, uh, laws were used to produce a just society. So therefore, ma'at is the task and the reward. And Gina, do you have a, a comment? Yeah, I see that you right? Yes, yes, I do. Uh -huh. And and my comment is that, you know, when you know better, then you do better. Mm -hmm. So these we all had a life before we got to this point. And now that we have a template, it is something that we can strive to. Because this is something that I, not every day, but often will say in the morning and will say in the evening. And then that when you said in the morning, you say, I will not. And when you do it in the evening, you say, I have not. So mm -hmm. it's a strive too. Yeah. Something you know, to work toward. You know what that None is? None of us are perfect. You know what? That's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful, Angina. That, that, yes. That's a really good way to start out the day. That 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 so you start out your day like that and then and then you reflect right what, what you've done uh, that that is a beautiful um, meditation I, I mean it's uh thank you for that example i think a lot of people that that are listening are like yeah that's a good idea right mm -hmm. right because none of us are perfect and we're you know but but we're striving too and mm -hmm. we're you know we're 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 growing and we're evolving and we're works in progress. So we strive too. And if you start your day off like that, and then you can end your day with, I have not. And nine times out of 10, you're going to get, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you're going to get a lot of, a lot of them that you have not done. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's something to work toward. Mm -hmm. That's my take. Thank you, yeah. brother. Yeah. Uh, you had a you had a, a comment or a question. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to also commend what uh, uh, Mama Ingina said. It's hard to add on to that because what her explanation was so perfect. What I what I think about. Um, 
you know, I, I was born in a, a Christian, uh, with a Christian background, you know, being raised that way. And I know the, the I don't know if I can say the equivalent because all these things in the Christian uh, doctrines come from uh, the African uh, foundation, but Christians would often say, you know, I, I'm saved, you know, I, I'm, I'm living my life as a, as a saved Christian or so. And like Mama and Gina was saying, it's once you come into that knowledge, because how many of us would be able to meet those standards of 42 declarations of innocence at any point in time <laughs> in our life? Uh, and so I think, like he was saying, once you come into that knowledge and you're making a commitment to live your life going forward, you know, hopefully uh, you're able to uh, maintain that that declaration of innocence. You know, I start off pretty good too till I go out in public. Then I realize I'm not gonna make it. So, uh, mm. you know, <laughs> and you start off like, you know what, God, I'm, I'm not gonna make number 19 because, uh, you know, it's, you know, these people are messing with me. So I'm gonna tell you <laughs> right now. So we all start off hoping to, you know, complete that journey. But I think it's not gonna. You're not. You're never judged by your first days on earth you'd be judged by your last days on earth. I always kind of thought of it, the whole, my thinking around it, because like I said, I'm new to this stuff, was that, you know, like judgment seat, you know, on the last day, you know, you stand before God on judgment day and, you know, to be able to say, I have not done this, have not done that. Have, that and that's kind of the line, I, along the lines I was thinking about this. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's the wrong way. And that's the way it's, and that's the way it's presented. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, you, you know, you start, uh, as, as Mom and Gina said, where you are yeah, and, I like that. And, and, and progress that way to keep it. Bob, uh, you know, when I hear the light like a feather, it reminds me of Bob Marley's song, uh, Misty Morning uh, is the title. And he says, light like a feather, heavy as lead, you know. Like, because because these these laws, as we go further, you'll see, uh, they are pretty profound. Uh, all right. Um, so let's see. Is there someone else that has a raised hand? Oh, John, you you raised your hand, but but uh, I can lower it now, right? Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to the screen. Glad to see my friend, uh, Mr. Clarence. Um, I've known Clarence since he was a youth, and I'm glad glad that Clarence has joined us today. Thank you for coming, Clarence. My pleasure, brother. All right. So, um, so here we are uh, back, and this is how you would write uh, Mott. These two symbols are most important as you'll see, these symbols, but all of them together signifies Mott. So here, Mott, it doesn't have like one word definition because English is a very limiting language. Even though that's the only language that I truly know, it's, it's limited. So. When you talk about Mott, it has all these different meanings. It means truth. It means justice. It means law, integrity, uprightness, correctness, righteousness, steadfast, unalterable, reality, order, stability, continuity, equilibrium, balance, measurement, reciprocity, and then Ma, uh, Dr. Sebi's uh, wife, um, uh, former wife, uh, her name is Ma'a, uh, the concept of right, true, real, genuine, upright, righteous, just, authentic. And then when you look at other um, uh, cultures and other uh, uh, spiritualities, you see that, okay, among the, the Mott's equivalent is, is like karma and, and, and dharma among uh, the Indus Valley people. And then 
among uh, the, you know, the Chinese, uh, the Tao. Uh, so Samat so is, and, and then there's different um, personifications of Ma, Ma, May, Mayet, Mat, Mut, Maat. So, and then even among the Greek goddesses, uh, Ma, their, their derivatives are coming from Mat. I know this is long. Okay, but there's some more. So, depending on how you write it, you know, it means order, it means truth, it means integrity. Uh, and this, this here, truth of Amenti, it's a place in heaven. And these are different ways that you can write Mat. Let's see, let me slide this up. These are different ways that Mott can be expressed. And this is the judgment scene, and this is the famous scene where Ani um, passes away, and he is led by Anpu to this judgment. And here his heart is placed on the scale, on the other side is a feather of truth, and he's He's, he's lining up the scale, and then Chihudi is recording it. He's, he's obviously said the right things, his heart balanced out, and then here, Hor, or Heru, or Horus, uh, is, leads him to the judge, and be, and and the Wasir and backing him up are his sisters, Aset and Nebhet. And coming from this Nile, there's, there's so much symbolism. You know, this is the uh, fallopian tubes, and here are the sons of Hor or H Horus or Heru. So. I mean, it's a meditation just to look at that. And Minister Motep, on the um, wane of the heart, um, where it shows that the, that it actually is not perfect balance in the sense of um, the wane. Yes. And, um, you know, that I find, you know, although we say that we seek, we're seeking you know, perfection, but perfection is um, something is something that we're seeking and it's not something that we really attain as perfection. Is that what well, that can symbolize? You know, that's, uh, again, it's, it's a very complicated, I'm, I, I hate to, to, to put it that way, but it's, uh, yes, we're all striving for perfection. We're all striving to, to really uh, remember why we came. We have a amnesia problem. We fe feel that we are disassociate, uh, disassociated from the divine, that, that the divine is not parse and parcel of our very being, that we are actually divine beings come down here to this classroom uh, to determine, again, our divinity. And these uh, 42 declarations of Mott lead us on that path to regaining knowledge of who we are. And it does not say, and, and I know that we've taught this for years, but uh, we were reading a book, The Stolen Legacy, where Dr. George G.M. James did not read the Medu Nature. And so he was falling along the lines that the, that the Greeks said, because on the temple of De Delphi, it says, know thyself. But really, the expression is said this way. It is, I know what is in my heart. The real expression, 
that we take and know thyself is I know what is in my heart. So on one side, the feather, it's, it's symbolic, you know? A part of our problem too is taking things too literal. You know, we, 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 um, Minister Calhoun used to use this. I thought it was funny. He was, he, he was talking about, um, you know, Jesus talking to the, uh, disciples and, um, and he was saying, you know, just leave your nets where they are. And then one of the disciples says, yeah, but you said we was going to be fishers of men. No, you know, they, they were taking it too literally. And so sometimes these are symbolic things to remind us of something even more spiritual. So this, this scale and, and the feather of my, and, and it's used an ostrich feather. There's a reason for that. It has to do with this, the particular movement that the ostrich makes on the plane. It's symbolic of the way that uh, the orbits, uh, the, you know, the planets orbit the sun, et cetera. Now in this book, I know I got several uh, versions of it. This one here, this blue one, it's the one that I have. It's called Stellar Theology and Masonic Astronomy. It's by Robert uh, Hewitt Brown. And uh, in that book, we find, I, I found another copy. Okay, so in that book on page 126 through 127, it's a book that, that you know, there's, there's a lot of questions that are asked by people that are Masons. And in here it says, uh, right here at the bottom, it says, to the Egyptians in whom in whose solemn processions the solstices carry the cubit of justice by which perpendiculars, right angles, squares may be laid out, its form being that of one arm of a square with the inner end cut to an angle of 45 degrees or one half of a right angle. And then he goes down and 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 says how it how it is connected to the terms the upright man or just man and then he gives script a, a scriptural phrases that are found in Isaiah twenty six seven and uh, Psalms fifteen two. Um, Thou most upright doth weigh the path of the just. This is why we use the New International Version. I don't even know what that is. He, he that walketh uprightly, Psalms 15.2. And, and the am, admonition, admonition to walk uprightly before God and man. So this glyph, that's part of the way that you, that you write mot, has to do with all of this. And then as we continue... The square or right angle represents 90 degrees or the fourth of a circle. And then he breaks down all these things, you know, geometrical things that uh, we may or may not want to get into tonight. But, you know, I got to thinking, okay, it's going back to eighth grade math, geometry. What is a perpendicular? And here, A. AB is perpendicular to XY. They meet in the middle. It's 90 degrees. Everybody see that? So here, get this out of the way. Here we see Wasir, who, by the way, this is the origin of the Confederate flag. Uh, I wish racists would get their own symbols. All right. So he's sitting on this glyph. That's Mott. But he's also sitting on the square. He's seated on the square. This is where Masons get their symbolism. 
from. And and the the sim, the 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 um, symbol that's in the sim, in in the square is called Simantawi. Don't have time to to uh, to deal with it today, but it has to do with the joining together of opposites. So there's Mat in Medu Nature. Again. And here we see Ra. When Ra is going across sun, so here's the sun on its path from sunrise to sunset. You know, and we can view the sky from 50 uh, degrees north latitude. I don't know why you would want to do that. But anyway, uh, here we see Ra in his boat, solar boat. The oars are who and Sia, authoritative utterance and exceptional insight. But here he's seated on Mott. And then this glyph right here is pet. It's the sky. So what this is saying is that, you know, uh, People can write in different books and you can delete stuff out and things like that. But the sun is, is set up in such a way, the cosmos is set up in such a way that it's based upon Mott and that it's unalterable. It's so regular that you can calculate 10,000 years from now, what time the sun is going to rise and set. So that's, that's another reason why this glyph is so important. So judgment scene again, we've already, we've already covered that. And here's a cl close up of the uh, top left-hand corner. And these Neturu, which, uh, you know, Westerners tell us they're gods and goddesses, they actually represent different aspects of yourself. So here, cognitive will, reason, emotion, heavenly, earthly, feelings, witness, speech, all of these things. These so-called gods and goddesses, they're, they're actually a part of you. And actually, there were 360 Neturu, or principles of the divine, and, and, and the ancients along the Nile still teach to this day that the human person, human being, has 300. Not five senses, but 360 senses. Let's just show you how, how thrown off we are from really what's reality. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes these judges, it's 12. And Astra Quasi teaches that's where they got the 12 jurors plus uh, the judge was seer for a courtroom. Now, I will say um, Sacramento, um, Sister Betty Davis uh, gave us this beautiful picture of Ma. It's really big and it's, uh, you know, right in the center of our sanctuary. And, uh, you know, for a while I was trying to piece together what all this said. And uh, uh, Dr. Ray Davis uh, used to be among us uh, uh, in we'll say Oakland, did this uh, trans translation for me. So the first thing you do when you're, when you're looking at all these different pictures, you, you see which way the faces, which direction the faces. So because the faces of the animals and the, uh, the humans are facing this way, this means that's where you start. 
That's where you start reading. And so here, so the first thing you do is you do a, a transcription. And so you, you, put, you put all the, the consonants together, okay? And then there's what, what comes next is the transliteration. And, 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 and this is the way it comes out. And then, so the translation means, says, words said by Mat, the daughter of Ra, the holy one of Ra, to the royal daughter, the great wife, Nefertari, beloved of Mut, the justified or true of voice. So that's, that's what this little section is saying. And these are different ways that Mott is um, pictured. You can always tell it's Mott though, because she'll have the single ostrich feather on her head. Now, if you see a masculine form, a netter with a single ostrich feather, that is the netter shoe or air. But if it's feminine, it's, it's always Mott. Okay, I'm going to pause here, uh, take some questions, let you breathe. I like your, uh, I like your kente there, Judy. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, are there any questions, anything uh, that you'd like to say? Or, Mo, you went too fast, or I don't understand what. Go ahead. Anyone? I'll say something. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. Um, first of all, thank you. Yeah, I love my Kenta Paul. Um, now, that was the other thing you were talking about, vial, um, vowels and different consonants yes. in the language. Yes. And I was going to say something, but I don't want to talk too much. But uh, Ma'at, I noticed you pronounced it Ma'at. I, that's the first time I've ever heard it pronounced mock, which is interesting. But I know you've been studying and researching. Well, well you know what? There's people say it different. So, uh, so when we first started saying it, we said ma'at, you know, because it's a ma, M A, and then there's like a apostrophe in between the two A's. So it was ma'at. And then, you know, I was listening to different scholars. They were saying mott. So, you know, it's kind of like potato, potato. Uh, we <laughs> speak the, uh, you know, the, the, the Madhu nature. We don't know. Uh, there, there are languages now that are, that are very close akin to it. When I was in Egypt, um, uh, you know, we're just kind of sitting around with a group. And um, uh, Abdel Hakim's grandson, um, Asked me about Abdel Hakim Awiyan a little later, but his grandson was was there on that tour, and he said, "We are Egyptians. We're not Arabs. And when people come here from Saudi Arabia, they can't understand us because sixty percent of the words we use are the words that were that were used in the ancient times." He said, "He just he just said that emphatically." And, you know, it was just another thing for me to take note uh, that, okay, there's, 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 and, and you know, actually, uh, some of the way that they've able to decipher the language is listening to the cops, who are the cops, the Coptic people, uh, and the Coptic language is the ancient comedic language written in Greek letters. So, um, you know, so they, they, they use that to help translate. All right. Um, I hope I answered your question, Judy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not me if I didn't. Uh, are there, is there anything else? Ebony, it's a beautiful uh, picture you have of yourself. Can you, can you show us who you are just, just for a minute? Um, Hi. <laughs> all right. Oh, hey, she looks just as beautiful as the uh, picture that she had up there. I thought. I thought it was a model's picture, but it is. <laughs> okay, just wanted to say hi. And uh, where are you from? Um, I'm from Southern California. 
I'm a guest of Clarence who oh. invited me to the meeting today. So nice to meet all of you. I now have relocated to Sacramento. All right. Uh, hopefully I get to meet all of you in person one day. Yes, that would be that would be great. We're we're right now we're meeting on Zoom. You know, yeah. we're not actually meeting in our meeting, but I'm I'm just saying on 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 Sundays that's what we're doing now. Uh, so yeah, would love to have you uh, become a part of us. I'm I'm glad that you uh, I'm glad that you uh, came by. Thank you for inviting her, Clarence. Okay. <laughs> it, Absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm going to I'm going to go, uh, move on. I, I'm just I'm just checking pulses to see where people are. You know, because I, you know, I just wanted to, I know, uh, see, it's not new for me. It's just, it's just old hat for me. I, 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 I've been reading this all the time. Yes, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. Brother Minister, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Even though I've been hearing it for many, many years, this, you've slowed it down enough for me to just like, because I'm a slow learner. I like to just kind of marinate in everything I learn. Uh, so back just a moment back to the transliteration. Yes. That, that whole process. One of the things that has confounded me is, you know, th those term that those terminology and uh, just like the sister had mentioned earlier about the, the consonants and so on. I know I know that that's what what these are. Like Aikwe has a book and I think he may have it. It's what the Pata Hotel. Yes. Yes, I, I have that book and it's written in like, I don't know, seven languages. Right, I, he's got he's got many languages. Yeah, I'll give you a second to pick it up. Yeah, keep talking, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, so, so what I wanna find out is, is there a way, I, I wanna be able to, in my own mind, get a sense of what that sound is because that's what they're providing. That first stage is the actual sound of the word. At least that's what in written terms, the sound of that word. Mm -hmm. And there's some international uh, standards that they use to give you what the sound of words are. Is that fair? Is that correct? Yeah. You know, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of people, there's this brother, his name is Wajau. Uh, and he, and he teaches, he gives classes online. He's, he's written a book, um, Riketi Amen. Sure. She, she used to be Riketi Wembley. She teaches Madunetcher. She, she she teaches uh, Madunetcher. To me, though, and and, and this is what um, I think the people that are in Kemet, the people that are in Nubia, when you listen to them speak, there's there's certain uh, quote unquote Nubian tribes. The way that they speak now is like Middle Kingdom Egyptian. Yeah. And, and so those are the people that we need to go around and, and be, and, and so I asked our guide, uh, Muhammad Fami, because he told me, he says, well, he says, I'm half Nubian. You know, my mother is a Nubian. And I said, oh, so you speak the, the, the Nubian language? He says, no. He says, he says, because I'm only half Nubian, you know, they won't let me. Yes, right, right. He said, because they're trying to preserve the culture. They're trying to preserve that. That's, that's what he, that's what he told me. And uh, when he, when he came on, we, he came on Black Knowledge Matters. And the first thing he said was, he said, I asked the Nubian elders, you know, where the, the word Kemet came from. You know, what did what did what did it originally mean? And you know what he said? And he and he and he sent me the glyph. He said it means the black mother. Sure. And he and he sent me this glyph, and it had it had like it had like a queen, and, and she had the 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 burnt piece of charcoal on her head. Interesting. And then it and then and then it had KMT, you know, written out. In well, well, that that take well that helps me even be more focused on what I'm asking. Uh -huh. If if that if your friend were if you were to present your friend with that 
the, the transliteration, the, 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 the consonants and the vowels, that first part, that first stage of the translation process. Yes. yes. Would that would that person be able to confirm that those are the sounds? That's the way it should sound phonetically. I mean, in other words, is this the phonetical sound of the language? And the reason why it's important to me is is that for me, I want to be able to feel like when I'm reading, when I'm reading someone's uh, translation as uh, Aikwe in his book, the Tahoe Tep. I want to feel like because he provides the whole steps, right? He gives the, he you know, gives you, you know when when uh, uh, so Aikwe Arma came to Wose. Well, yeah. Aikwe Aikwe Arma used to be a visiting professor at UC Berkeley. Yeah, I, I actually just to, just to throw in there, I saw him in person in a small conference room. Uh, Calvin Mori was the one who you know, invited me because he. I how is Calvin? I don't know. I haven't spoke to him for years. But so, but anyway, he's the one. So I, me and Calvin went to UC Berkeley uh -huh. in a conference room. And Aikwe was at the head of the table. There may have been maybe 20 people in there, maybe 20-ish people in there. And uh, yeah, so yes, he. It, what, I guess one of the professors there is, is a very close friend of his. Friend of his. So anyway, I, I, I remember that. Well, so he came to Wose. Yes. And when Machalisi and them approached him, he was like, wait a minute, I don't write uh, scriptures. You, you exactly. Know, how, are you, how are you using my book? You, you know, and uh, so they explained it to him. And then he ended up coming and speaking. At, at, but the reason why I bring him up is because uh, Greg Hodge and others were actually taking Medu Nature classes from Aikwe Arm. He was he was also teaching that sure. at, at UC Berkeley. Now I don't know if it was part of the UC Berkeley curriculum or he just you know, but 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 he was teaching, and, and so now uh, Aikwe Arm's uh, 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 his his publishing company or however it's called is called Per Ankh. Yeah, exactly. You know, House of Life. You know, so he's. He's very much vested in knowing the language. Is this answer your question? I don't know, Jeff. Well, we're, we're, we're getting a, a, as close approximation as we could. And, and again, you, you know, I mentioned the cops. A lot of, a lot of the language uh, is translated, uh, you know, learning how the, the pronunciation is using the Coptic language. The Coptic language is the ancient Egyptian language or the ancient Kemetic language, but it, it, the, it's written in Greek characters. Ah, okay. Well, that still gives me something to... to... So just as, 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 a, as an example, it's, uh, so when you, when you see tefnut, you know, you'll see the word T-E-F-N-U-T, -E tefnut. Well, they pronounce it Tefnuti. You know, the, the priest are uh, the Hanut or, or, you know, this is, this is coming out of the, the Coptic uh, language. So, so they use part of that language in order to know how to pronounce the words. And, you know, we all, we all grew up thinking it was called Egypt, but that, but it wasn't, it was, it, they, they were trying to say, now, now get this, they were trying to say Heku Pata, and it, and it came out Hoi Egyptos. And, <laughs> and that's why we use Egypt today. You, you know, they, 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 they were trying to say it, but they, but they could. Okay, I'm going to get back. Um, uh, thank you. Sure. Uh, well, let, let me pause. Uh, I don't want to rush through anything. We, we only have like about um, 18 minutes uh, left. Uh, are, is there any other comments uh, that uh, or, or questions that, that we can answer right now? Uh, uh, Jeff, if you have another question, or uh, I guess not. He, he, he put he put he put the embarrer back up. All right, and no, I'm Mama, good. I'm good. Go ahead. Uh, well, hold it, Jeff, and then Mom and Gina. Go ahead, uh, and then and then Judy. All right. I just 
wanted to say right quick that this is a copy of my 42 Confessions. It's on like a card stock. So I keep it by my bed. And um, that way they said, if you want to remember something or do something, you put it by your bed. And when you go to sleep, it will, you know, enter your psychic. And um, we have at, we'll say, Oakland, what we call new member packets. And we have several things in that. And um, this is going to be in our new packets, um, a card stock of this, so that you can have that. And just a side note, Calvin Moray works in San Francisco at UCSF for the last couple of years. All right. And that's where I saw him there. And he is well. He is well. His son is um, away at college. And his wife there still. Wait, wait a minute. You know, yeah. I went to his wedding. Uh, you know, uh, uh, his son. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, he was a student at Ile Omade. And um, they're well. They go to um, um, Heart and Soul. All right. Uh, well, the wife. next time you see him, please give him my greeting. Okay, Jeff, I didn't know if you wanted to come back on. Otherwise, uh, Judy, why don't you go ahead and Jeff, hold your point. Go ahead. Go ahead, Judy. Okay, I'm going to be quick because I know you don't have a lot of minutes left, but I did have a thought and, and this is just something to put out to you and to the class before another discussion. Um, is it possible that, you know, I, that there were ways to communicate or languages without, you know, without speaking? Um, like I guess you're saying, not just telepathy, but I have a friend who studies a lot of languages and I was thinking if you did not, if we were, if a child was born in the forest and had no parents, he was by himself, would he still be able to communicate? And did we have ways back then to communicate? And what, and I guess I'm saying that to say, we can talk, you know, I don't want to throw us off. But no, language, it, it's all related. It, it, it's all related to me. Uh, uh, I don't know how others feel, but so the 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 culture, the the language, the people go all over Africa. You can find parts in South Africa today, like like there's a picture of Nelson Mandela, and he's got a collar on just like the ancient Egyptians. It's a young picture. Of, of, of Nelson Mandela. There's a there's a, a petroglyph in South Africa that's of an Ankh that's dated 200,000 BC, 200,000 BC. Now, the reason why I mentioned that, there was a great um, shaman among South Africans. And um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of his name right now. Uh, maybe you all will think of it for me. Uh, but he said there was a time when people used to communicate telepathically, that if a man wanted to communicate with his wife, all he would have to do is think of her. And, and it would open up the communication that, uh, you know, there was a time when the Neturu walked the earth. And what the Neturu were, were, were beings that operated with 360 senses. So the answer to your question, yes, absolutely. Uh, you, you know, yes, absolutely. And uh, before there was a written language, there was obviously a spoken language. There was a time when we didn't have to write it down. There was, there was a time when we didn't have to write it down, but the earth changed, different positions of the earth, and now we're down to five senses. I hope I answered your question, Judy. Yeah, uh, the, re the only reason I mentioned that was because by the fact that we're looking at the meta neta the pictures, that was a way to communicate. But I'm wondering, you know, you could you could interpret it, and people had to use their perception or whatever to associate 
words with those pictures, but I was thinking, okay, without all of that, were they communicate? Is there some other form of communication? Because those pictures, if they have exact words, but anyway, I'm ready to move forward. Oh, and no, I'm glad that those are very interesting questions to me. I'm glad, I'm glad that you asked those questions. I don't, I don't necessarily get a chance to open up about uh, you, you know those those things there, it sounds fantastic but i could provide documentation on, on, on that but yes there was a time when we did not need to use writing or speaking to mm -hmm. communicate go ahead john I, I just wanted to mention an interesting conversation i had last night with a christian brother a minister in training Mm -hmm. Baptist church and we had a you know long conversation about a bunch of stuff but toward the end of it uh, I asked him a question because we were talking about language and uh and biblical you know the bible and stuff and I said so let me ask you this man so the first man the first person on the planet earth so you're telling me that the first person that was born came with a complete language to speak you know, that's when the creator created man, that that person, that person uh, came with a complete vocabulary. And uh, he said, yeah, what do you say? <laughs> you know what, um, I, I, the honest answer is I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't either. You know, the, the honest answer is, is I don't know. I know that in the early times, people were more, they, they knew themselves more than we know ourselves now. Yeah. Okay, and there was, there was ways to communicate verbally. Just think about this right now, we're only seeing a narrow band of vision, but there's ultraviolet, there's, there, there's things, you know, above and below that. That scale, same thing with sound, ultrasound, you, you know. Uh, but when our senses are open, we, we would be able to see and hear those other spheres. And, and part of our, you know, getting to know ourselves or coming more into ourselves is how we, achieve. so we want to get a better perception. Of, of 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 life mm -hmm. and of nature and of existence jeff um i don't know if you're going to uh ask no, no i'm good i i appreciate all those additional questions that helps me even better to hear all the other voices yeah. i like the questions uh, uh thank you for for the question let's see let's we got about nine minutes uh i don't want to go too much I, I i have more slides but um Let's see, where, where were we? Okay, so I, I did want to talk about Tahuti, and uh, a lot of times we see him as, as the ibis bird, but he's also, he's also represented as a baboon. Tahuti, the lord of Kim Mintu, self-created to whom none had given birth is the netter responsible for teaching the world to write and record information with the Medu Netter system. From many funerally, funerary texts, it's known that Jehudi was the netter of all the arts and sciences, that he was the Lord of books and the scribe of the Netteru and mighty in speech. And here is a you know, just a, a representation of Tahuti. And he's associated with the moon. A lot of times you'll see he'll have this moon crescent on his head. And then, of course, you know by our discussion that this feminine aspect with a, with a single ostrich feather is Mat. And this person is, is weighed. And then he's going to go to Wasir. And here is another representation. Sorry, it's a little fuzzy. 
And this, this is Tahuti uh, looking at himself. So sometimes he, he has this ibis bird headdress, and the other times it's represented as a baboon. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times, uh, uh, you, well, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but always our, our ancestors were very close in nature. And so they observed when the sun rose, the baboon would give praise to, to when the sunrise. And so that was the way that they drew the, the soul with the upright uh, arms. Now in the movie uh, Lion King, the cartoon The Lion King, Rafiki was the wise baboon in The Lion King. The Lion King is really a story of the Wasir Osirian drama, because you have Mafasa, that was Osiris. You have um, you have uh, Sarabi, uh, that that was that was Aset or Isis, and you had Simba, who was uh, Horus or Horu or Hor, and uh, then you had uh, Scar, who represented. Uh, Wasir's evil brother set. So, um, you know, they, they put little things in, even in cartoons. And if you're not really up on it, you, you know, you'll miss it. You'll just be, oh, Robert Guillaume did the voice. And, you know, yeah, that, that, was, that was clever. But, but what they were talking about, they were actually giving a representation of uh, Chihuti. And here, and those of you that, I watched this, I must have watched this like 400 times with my kids. Mm. And uh, this, um, you know, uh, Simba had forgotten who he was and, and he needed Rafiki, which is, uh, means friend in uh, Kiswahili and Arabic, uh, you know, comes and tells him, hey, look, uh, you, you, he shows him this pool and he looks in the pool and he sees his reflection. He says, that's not, that's not my father. That's just my own reflection. And then the skies open up and James Earl Jones comes in and says, Simba, you've forgotten me. Anyway, uh, this symbolism is used in, in that movie. Now, doctor, uh, now this, is, this can be found on the Wolse Sack website. And, and I'm not sure if it's on the Wolsey Oakland, Wolsey community.org, but Dr. Obinga, Theophia Obinga, gives us 25, there's 25 aspects to Mott. There's the sacred, the cosmos, the state, the society, the human. There's the religious, the cosmic, the political, the social, the anthropological. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you just go across theology, cosmic myths, divine monarchy, clergy, religious anthropology, cosmic dimensions. So, so Dr. Theophia Obinga, a great scholar, um, look him up if you're not familiar with him. Theophia or, or Theo, Theophile Obinga. Just look up Dr. Obinga. Mm -hmm. um, and he, uh, when he first came to the United States, uh, one of the first places that he spoke was, was McClyman High School in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And he was drawing this out. Dr. Asa Hilliard put this in his book, Saba. And then we had one of our members uh, that lives now in Florida. His name is Court Thomas. And he, he did this, um, he did the imagery on this. And so I, I kind of like this. And so this is a good, another way to kind of think about Mott. Also, Dr. Karinga wrote this book on Mott. It's like about 400 pages. These are some of the table of contents. Sorry, we're rushing. Yeah, about 450 pages in that book. In his discourse, Kunanup urges us to speak Mat. Here's the transliteration. Do Mat, for it is mighty, it is, it is great, it, it endures, 
Its worth is tested. It leads one to blessedness. Mm. And then here, um, I don't want to go over. It says, so this is this is, is continuing in Dr. Karinga's book. He says, it's the totality of ordered existence and represents things in harmony and in place. The political domain in which Mott is justice in opposition to injustice, the social domain in which the focus is on right relations and duty in the context of community, the personal domain is to follow the rules of mind, is to realize concretely the universal order in oneself to live in harmony with the ordered whole. Mm. All right, just a little bit more. So this, there's this, also this book, it's, it's, it's huge. It's um, Mott, The Guiding of Principles of Moral Living by this brother Kilimanjaro, Dr. Kilimanjaro. And uh, what we want to do is we want to be Ma Karu. We want to be true, a voice, and justified. I come forth, amen, pure of heart, within the purity of body, I live through my words. And the opposite of Ma is Isfet, and it is injustice chaos, impurity, political unrest, and evil. All right, I'm going to stop there. I think I think that's that's it. Ashe. Mm -hmm.